He's been rising up the recruiting rankings, and the Kentucky Wildcats just finally offered him. Five-star VJ Edgecombe is an extremely aggressive and very fun player to watch. You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what is going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Stahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat over 50 infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. On today's episode of Locked on Kentucky, going to be discussing the latest offer. Five-star VJ Edgecombe has been offered by the Kentucky Wildcats. Going to talk about what we've seen out of him after taking a look at some of his highlights. I really, really, really like what I see out of this kid. There's a reason why he's been climbing up the recruiting rankings as of late. Also on today's episode, I'm going to dive into a question that Andrew Stefaniak, writer at Wildcats today alongside myself, uh, threw up during his uh, Kentucky briefing article that he posted earlier this morning. Who will lead Kentucky in rebounds this upcoming season? I think we've got a pretty good answer as to who going to dive into that later on in the show. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. I want to remind everyone out there that we are free and available on all platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, please sub to the show. If you're listening on podcast, I really appreciate your support wherever you are tuning in there. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. VJ Edgecombe, before I dive into what I've seen out of VJ, just going to let you know who he is. As of right now, he is a five-star shooting guard in the 2024 recruiting class. Long Island Lutheran is where he plays his high school basketball in Glenhead, New York. He is six foot five, 180 pounds. He is the number six overall player. According to the 24-7 Sports Composite Rankings, the number two small forward and the number one player in the state of New York. 0.9967 rating, according to the National Composite Rankings. 24-7 Sports just has him at a pure 99, which is, again, good for five stars. He's been rising up the recruiting rankings as of late, actually earned his fifth star just, I believe, a week or so ago, maybe a little bit and maybe a little bit past that, but VJ, I think, is a player that Kentucky's got a little bit of work to do uh, with considering how late I think that they've entered this race for his services. But I don't think by any means that Kentucky is out of this. We've seen Coach Cal pull some crazy recruiting uh, recruiting uh, things before with different players where they've entered late and they've been able to kind of steal a player for maybe one or multiple schools. But Man, I really, really, really like his film. He was the 2022-23 Boys Basketball Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of New York. Averaged 15 and a half points per game, five rebounds, two and a half assists, 2.1 steals. Also averaged one and a half blocks, and that's kind of where I want to start my breakdown today. So I'm going to give you what I have written down and uh, the notes that I've taken whenever I've gone through and watched a couple of different uh, highlight reels of this kid. I'm also going to give you what 24-7 sports recruiting analyst Travis Branham had to say about VJ as well. The first thing, though, aggressive player. He's a very aggressive player. You can see in his highlights just about the way he goes about things. I don't think that there's like an arrogance or a moxie about his game. I just think that he goes about things on both ends of the floor uh, very intentionally. He's an aggressive defender, a high flyer. And he likes to dunk on just about everybody. Again, six foot five, 180 pound shooting guard. This is who we're dealing with here. Slashes to the basket almost angrily uh, at, on the offensive end, whether it be uh, in the fa- on the fast break or whether it be uh, in the half court. This kid really goes out and he gets it. Um, whether it be with one hand uh, dunking on different people, whether it be flushing it down in transition, catching lobs with two. I I mean, you really do see a variety of ways this kid dunks the basketball here. And I think that the next thing I want to point out is continuing along that note of aggression. 
I think that he finishes, not just dunks, but finishes with layups uh, very, very well. Initially, during the first highlight reel that I watched, I was not impressed with the variety of ways that he finished through contact. And then I got to see another highlight reel, and he really gets up in the air, and he takes some contact, and he showed the ability to finish in a lot of different ways. Floaters, um, reverse layups, and again, finishing through contact while he's driving. I mean, I was just very impressed with the way that he took this aggressive nature and was still able to control himself and finish with such consistency. Obviously, it's his highlight reel. We're going to see the makes here, but I was very, um, very pleased with what I had to see, what I got to see on the offensive end when it comes to what his role, I think, essentially is going to be for a team like Kentucky. You got to see on top of the the high-flying, the dunking, and the uh, and the finishing, you got to see a lot of blocks. You got to see one and a half blocks per game uh, during his time, uh, during his 23 games here, I believe, uh, with his high school. But you really go and watch this film. Go and watch this highlight, uh, these highlight reels, and he's, he's snatching blocks. He's being very aggressive in transition on the defensive end. Um, he He's going up, and he's trying to get it, and I am very... Uh, I'm very thrilled uh, with the fact that you can see somebody like VJ who goes up and plays with such intensity, but also at the same time didn't really show a whole lot of emotion on the court, which is something that I respect. Uh, I, I like the, the way VJ plays this game. He goes out there, he gets it done loudly, and uh, doesn't really seem to, at least in the highlight film, have a whole lot to say about it, um, which I, I think is very interesting. Again, I, th- I like the dunking. I like the high flying. The dude can jump. Um, and you, you got to see a lot of finishes through contact. I am not the biggest fan of his shooting form. I really liked it at certain points in his highlight videos. I think he needs to work on consistency with his release. I saw some really good shots, saw some others that I, I didn't like as much. Uh, I think just about every other shot was just like, yes, that's exactly what you want to teach in terms of your base, in terms of how you point your toes, in terms of how you bring the ball up, where you release it. I saw some low releases from him that uh, ended up going in. Maybe you need, to, uh, maybe he needs to work on a little bit more of that. But man, if it's going in and that's the way he wants to shoot the ball, I mean, I, I don't know what his percentage is, but if if it's going in at the rate that we got to see in the highlight tapes, I mean, I don't really think you can complain a whole lot, especially considering it's not like anything that like long-term damaging the shot's not bad I just wish that you could see a little bit more consistency and maybe I'm being a little too harsh there considering it's a junior in high school that's fair but I I mean for the number six prospect in in the country according to ESPN uh, a little bit higher a higher of a release and this kid is golden I mean all around he is he is a very 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 elite uh, offensive player I think that you got to see that whenever it comes to how he plays off ball uh, I think that he was a great catch and shoot three. He looks like a great catch and shoot three pointer, or uh, three point shooter rather. Uh, he also looks like he can handle things off of the dribble. We got to see in several different clips um, him pull up after is- in isolation or in half court, or I'm sorry, in the on the fast break where he would have the ball in his hands and he would just pull up and knock shots down. You like to see that out of a six five guard slash wing slasher type of player. I really like his offensive game defensively. Again. Alongside the blocks, the dude was just very aggressive. And I don't I don't mean that this is going to translate to a lot of fouls in college. It may, but what I'm sitting here telling you is I, I like the intensity. It doesn't he's not it does not look like he is just out there to score, although I think his statistics will reflect that's what he is best at on the offensive end of the floor, just slashing to the rim and and, and uh, occasionally hitting a three point shot. The man played some hard defense in some of these highlights, and again, not a lot of talking, which is something that I that I respect and appreciate because of how loudly uh, I think he plays the game uh, on the court. So, VJ Edgecombe, man, oh man, I, I really like some of the things that I got to see from him, both on both ends of the floor, because of what his role could be. So, this is what Travis Branham had to say about uh, Edgecombe. He's one of the most explosive athletes in all of high school, and with his improved half-court skill set, he's become an impactful slasher. He has changed, added change of direction, tightened his handle, and is now camp- capable of operating in traffic while creating for others. He's also making shots from deep. Edgecombe has a mixture of a high floor and a high ceiling. His recruitment illustrates that as he has become one of the most coveted players in the entire nation. And that's where I want to take this next here. 
Uh, according to uh, a tweet that he put out on July 30th, he's got a top 10. Kentucky was not in it, I think, not because they were not in the race uh, at the time. Florida, Baylor, Miami, Florida State, Duke, Alabama, uh, UConn, the G League, Michigan, St. John's, I believe Villanova, if I'm not mistaken, is in this race as well. I mean, you just got a lot of really big names out here that Kentucky's going to have to play, uh, play against here late. I'm going to be honest with you. When I watched his film, for some reason, I just it just screamed Baylor guard to me. I don't know why that is. It just screamed Baylor basketball guard the way that he plays the game. Um, I prefer that he come to Kentucky over the Bears after getting to see what he's capable of. But I, I think that he translates well to the collegiate game. And I think that he would translate very well with Kentucky's lineup next year. Because if, if let's say... DJ Wagner's gone. Justin Edwards is gone. You're probably going to look at Reed Shepard or Rob Dillingham handling point responsibilities. I think that you could slide this kid down to the three if you really wanted to. Maybe let him play the two for fun. I think that he could work as a slashing wing in a, in a small ball lineup. I think that he could really help Kentucky push the pace that they wanted to uh, just based on his highlights. The kid can fly. I, I, again, I'm in, very impressed with him, not just as a basketball player, but as an athlete. So, uh deserving of of how he's climbed the ranks here as of late. Uh, Kentucky offering him, I think, is great. Did not mean to rhyme that. How Kentucky approaches his recruitment for the next several months is going to be interesting to follow. Uh, I think we'll keep tabs on that here at wildcatstoday.com and Locked on Kentucky if you want to go follow along with our coverage over there. But, yeah, um, impressed, pleased, and, and glad Kentucky's getting in this one. So if you've got any thoughts on VJ Edgecombe, if you've got any thoughts on Kentucky basketball's recruiting class next year, we talked about it on yesterday's show. You can leave that in the YouTube comments below. All right, I want to take a dive into this article that Andrew Stefaniak wrote over at wildcatstoday.com about who may lead Kentucky in rebounding. I want to get to that in just a second. Before we do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind so that you're not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medication in hand. And on top of that, Jace is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using code LOCKEDON at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code LOCKEDON. All right, continuing along here on the Thursday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. Really appreciate you making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. If you have not checked out the Locked On College Basketball podcast with Andy Patton and Isaac Shade, you need to go ahead and do so. They talk a lot of Kentucky over there as well. They have me on the show quite a bit, and they talk about everything going on in the college basketball landscape. They do great, great work. They bring on guests. They bring on coaches. They bring on analysts, myself, like I just mentioned. It's a really good time over there. So Patton and Shade do phenomenal work. You need to go check out the Locked On, uh, Locked On Basketball podcast college basketball podcast, wherever you get your podcast or right here on YouTube. So would appreciate it if you went and gave them a sub or a follow. Who will lead Kentucky basketball in rebounding this upcoming season? Well, Andrew Stefaniak of Wildcats Today has an answer, according to Andrew Stefaniak, believing that he is going to be healthy. Andrew thinks that Ugunna Onyenzo will lead the Wildcats in rebounding this uh, this season. And this is what Andrew had to say. He said he is the most natural center of all the names previously mentioned, and he went through some of the other players that Kentucky's got on roster. And that's why I think Onyenzo will lead the Cats in rebounding this season. Regardless of who leads the team in rebounds, they have some big shoes to fill now that Big O is gone. And this is where I wanted to kind of dive in today. I want to give you four different players that have the ability to be really good rebounders for Kentucky. But before I dive into that, I want to preface it by saying this. I don't necessarily know if we're going to see an extremely dominant rebounder on this year's team statistically relative to the other players on roster. And what I mean by that is I don't know if we're going to see a player average 12 to 13 to 
however many Oscars she way re, uh, averaged, uh, 12 to 13, and then the next player be like uh, 6 or 7 or maybe even 8. I think that we are going to see a more evenly spread rebounding total or average for individual players in Kentucky's front court and on the wing, and we'll get to one of those players in a minute, but I think it's going to be a little bit more even. Now, does that mean Kentucky is significantly worse at grabbing offensive rebounds? No, I think that they're going to be just fine this season, and actually some numbers reflect that if certain players play uh, a certain amount of time and they don't fall off. But it also does mean I think they're going to take a slight step back because that's what Oscar Shibway did. That's what he did really, really well. Grab rebounds, especially on the offensive end of the floor. So you got on Yenzo. I agree. I think he's going to lead the team in rebounds this season. And I want to explain further why. He averaged 2.6 rebounds in 6.9 minutes per game last season. This is going to be a lot of numbers and a lot of just thought process relative to the rest of the rotation. So just walk with me here. 2.6 rebounds in about seven minutes a game. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. According to uh, Sports Reference College Basketball, per 40 minutes, if you put Yugan Onyenzo out on the court for 40 minutes a game, he'd average 15.1 rebounds per contest. 15.1? Pretty dang good, as we've seen with Oscar Shibwe. Now, two questions. Is Yugan Onyenzo going to be out on the court for 40 minutes a game this upcoming season? No. I don't think he is. Is he going to be grabbing 15 rebounds a game or anywhere close to it with the minutes that he is he is allotted? I don't think so, but I think double-digit rebounds could be in store depending on how Kentucky utilizes another player on this list, Trey Mitchell. We'll get to him in a second, but I want to finish my thought here with you, Gun Onyenzo. I think Onyenzo has the ability, even if he doesn't get a ton of minutes, to be a very strong rebounder for UK. You guys know how much I love Ken Palm, KenPalm.com. We talk about them quite a bit, and we're going to talk about them a lot whenever the season gets here. I think that there are a lot of great individual statistics on this website, but one of the ones that really made Oscar Shibwe shine was the offensive rebound percentage and defensive rebound percentage, those different statistics. According to Ken Palm, Oscar Shibwe had an offensive rebounding percentage of 19.6. So when he was on the court, essentially, he grabbed 19.6% of the offensive rebounds, I believe, that just Kentucky grabbed on the, on the floor. So that's very impressive. He also had a 28% defensive rebounding rate. So the man was just a vacuum for rebounds on either end of the floor. So I want you to keep those numbers in mind. For offensive 19.6. Defensive, 28. For Yugana and Yenzo, he, on the offensive end, 18.6. So just 1% lower than Oscar Shibwe's offensive rebounding percentage. And on the defensive end, 25.8%. So just uh, just a tick, a tick or so underneath Oscar Shibwe's defensive rebounding percentage. So all of that to say... I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Kentucky is going to have Oscar Shibwe on their roster again when it comes to rebounding. What I am going to tell you is if Yugana Onyenzo gets the minutes and he is not put in a weird position and he's healthy and he does not just fall off for whatever reason, Kentucky is going to have a very solid rebounder and defender in Yugana Onyenzo. I think. I believe. And I think he's going to lead the team in rebounds because of that. Now, the second player here that I think you could look at is Aaron Bradshaw at power forward. I don't know how Kentucky is going to handle their rotations this year if Bradshaw and Trey Mitchell are healthy. I don't know how they're going to do that. But I will sit here and tell you, Bradshaw averaged 9.4 rebounds per game in high school this upcoming season. And while that isn't extremely dominant, I don't think it necessarily has to be for you to be a good rebounder in college. I think that just going out on a limb here, Aaron Bradshaw will be your starting power forward, and I think he's going to get most of the minutes there. I think Trey Mitchell will primarily probably play center for UK. And again, you can be very you can be very wishy washy. You can those, those two guys are interchangeable. I think at the four and the five, whenever you put them out there on the in the same lineup, I don't really think it matters. 
in terms of positioning if you you don't have to define it. But I think Bradshaw's going to get his because I don't think there's going to be a lot of people taking minutes away from him if he is healthy. That's just my guess. Trey Mitchell, on the other hand, 7.8 rebounds per game during the Global Jam and 32 minutes per contest. I just don't know how many rebounds he's going to be grabbing relative to Bradshaw. If he's on the same, if he's on the court at the same time as you got on Yenzo, how many rebounds is he grabbing um, if Onyenzo is on the court? So I, I think that Mitchell is going to be a good rebounder for you, but I don't think he's going to be as good or has, I think, the, uh, the kind of potential that Onyenzo has. And I'm just banking on Aaron Bradshaw not having his minutes taken away from Mitchell because I think they're going to play, I think they're going to play a little bit of a different position. Maybe, maybe I'm just wrong. And this coaching staff has a lot more confidence in Trey Mitchell and a lot less confidence in Aaron Bradshaw than I currently expect. I could just be wrong on that. Again, I don't know how they're going to handle it. But I, I, I think, I think that if we're going to tier, uh, uh, tier this, it's Bradshaw, or excuse me, it's on Yenzo, it's Bradshaw, and it's Mitchell. And then the fourth player I want to get to here and 24.8 minutes of action during the Global Jam, Justin Edwards averaged six and a half rebounds. Now, we've talked about Justin Edwards, I think, just about every episode that we've done in the past week. We've somehow mentioned Justin Edwards and his rebounding during the Global Jam. I think he looked great. I think that he's going to continue to look great. And this is kind of similar to what we're saying about Bradshaw. I just don't know how many players are taking away those minutes from him at that small forward position. He's going to get his. He's going to get his numbers. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you all of these guys are going to average eight-plus rebounds. Again, it just goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of this thought. I think Kentucky's rebounding just by RPG, just by rebounds per game, I think is going to be significantly more even than maybe we expect through three or four different players. And maybe Justin Edwards is the one that kind of falls off there and is a couple of rebounds behind. That's okay. That doesn't mean he's a bad rebounder. I just expect all four of these guys to contribute in some way, some way, shape, or form, and I agree with Andrew. I think that Onyenzo is at the forefront of this conversation. So if you've got any thoughts on who will lead Kentucky in rebounding this upcoming season, you can leave that in the YouTube comments below or hit me on the socials. All right, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at, Lan- or at Locked on UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Stahl underscore, and you can follow the show over on Instagram, that is at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, once again, leave them in the YouTube comments below. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode. Have a great rest of your day, and God bless.